What's up guys, the Lazy Goldmaker here, back with another video, finally. Um, current time is work is over and we're back to uh, making and posting videos a little bit more regularly again, so that's gonna be great. So in this one, I'm gonna cover some of the top mistakes that uh, new gold makers tend to make and uh, and why they're mistakes. This is mostly on a conceptual level and most of these things are, um, are things that aren't gonna directly cost cost you gold but they are going to limit your potential. They're going to keep you focusing on stuff that does not matter instead of getting a bigger gold pile, which is what we're all uh, looking for. So let's dive in. So the first tip or the first mistake that people tend to make is that they'll focus on optimizing small fry gold making methods, as I like to call them. Um, when you're new to gold making, even making just 1000 gold might feel like a huge win. Um, and that's going to feel great and you're going to keep doing what, what worked to get you that 1000 gold. Um, and that, this is not bad in itself. I mean, doing the things that work, that's how you get better at something. That's how you get richer in, in gold making. That's how you succeed. Do stuff that keeps making you gold. Now, the problem is if you never never graduate or you just focus on the methods that you've already used and then you focus too much on min-maxing something that does not have a high profit ceiling. Um, so I'd say like if you want to reach a million gold then if you spend all of your time trying to like absolutely min-max a lay strike or farming route that's probably not the best usage of your time. You'll stagnate eventually because there's a limit to how much more efficient you can be at that and then it's just about putting in time or more hours into farming. Um, you can't scale in small scale markets forever. You can't. You can't. Um, entry level markets are entry level and you need to look outwards past a certain point. You should realize that optimizing this market anymore, trying to optimize this market anymore is not worth my time relative to spending it on a higher earning potential opportunity. Um, so that means going into the high risk areas. That's where you want to go. High risk, high profit, high reward. That's where you need to get if you want to keep growing as a gold maker. Uh, so our second mistake, this one is uh, has some similarities to the last one. It's never trying new markets. Um, and it's not quite the same because on the last one, we've, it's the idea that you just spend too much time optimizing. You can spend too much time optimizing low value markets and also still spend some time testing out new methods and new markets. Um, and uh, if you just stay in the same markets forever, unless it is the most profitable market in the entire game, then you're not playing correctly if you want to maximize your gold. You need to test new markets. This is also the main way to get better at gold making, and particularly to get better at internalizing the ideas about why something is profitable. Uh, the more you test new markets, the better your understanding of gold making becomes. And what's profitable? Why is it profitable? What what works? Why does it work? Um, if you do th don't try new markets, it will take a very long time to start internalizing some of these concepts. Uh, making mistakes in new markets is the best thing you can do for your learning, for your long-term gold making capability, because that's going to be something you can learn from. And when it's your own mistake, it's going to feel more uh, significant to you than me telling you that something is a mistake. So go out there. Like if you've just been farming, then it's time to start crafting. Test out some crafting professions. Find some items that show up with a green profit in Trade Skill Master. Throw them on the auction house. If you've just done crafting and you want to try flipping, then test some. Find make a simple flipping setup and test it out on some items that you're interested in flipping. Um, and then you'll learn from the mistakes or learn from your successes. Um, that's what you need to do to get better. Next up, focusing too much on the profit margin. This is something that it's profit margin is something that a lot of people focus on, but uh, it doesn't really matter how much your profit margin is as long as it's profitable. Um, we're not actually trying to maximize our profit margin, at least most of those most of those who care about gold making. What we're actually trying to optimize is our total amount of gold. You want to get more and more and more and more gold. Past a certain point, you have so much gold already that uh, it doesn't really matter how much you need to spend to make gold. Um, as an example, it is way better 
to sell a rank 6 legendary for 110,000 with 10,000 profit than selling a crafted vanilla item that you can sell for a thousand gold that costs you 100 gold to make. That last one has a 10 times profit margin in terms of the crafting cost, whereas the first one has just 10%. It's a huge difference in profit margin, but the legendary with 10,000 gold profit per item is a lot more better. You're making 10,000 gold per item rather than just 900 gold per item in terms of raw gold. And that's what actually matters. What you should try to ab maximize is generally going to be your profit per hour in absolute terms, in, the, in terms of how much gold is are you actually making per hour. Um, profit margin matters a little bit. If capital is your limiting factor, then you can use profit margin as sort of a guide and focus on more higher profit margin uh, markets. But generally, even then, you should focus more on sale rate than profit margin. Um, it's usually never the case that profit mar the highest profit margin item you can craft is the one you should focus on. So next up, opportunity cost. This is some. This is something a lot of. This is something you'll see a lot of on the WoW Economy Reddit. This is the idea that if you farmed an item, it's now free. Just because you didn't pay for an item doesn't mean it doesn't have value. People talk about opportunity cost, but I don't think that's the wrong way to think about it. What you need to think about is the fact that any item you have has a value. And that value is whatever it can be traded for on the auction house, what you can sell it for. So if you're going to use that to craft, then it better be worth more than what you could just sell the item for on the auction house. Otherwise, you're losing out on potential value. Um, aim Always aim to sell crafted goods for more than the materials are worth. There are some uh, exceptions, but we'll not go into that, those in this, like, this video. There are some exceptions, primarily with intermediate materials. Uh, your time is not free, and neither are your materials, regardless of how you got them. They're not free. They're worth however much you can sell them for on the auction house right now. They're not worth what you paid for them. They're not worth um, what um, what you sold them for. They're worth what you can actually sell them for right now. All right, another one. The analysis paralysis. Analysis is sort of a trap. Analysis is fine in and of itself, but it's not actually where you learn. There's a trap with analysis and that analysis can often feel like you're actually doing something, but you're not. You're just looking at prices. You're not actually playing the auction house. You're not actually learning because you can only actually learn by doing something, in my opinion, though. So don't don't look at the price graphs on the Undermine Journal. Go into the game, test some ideas out. That's where you learn. You learn by making some initial simple trade skill master settings for something that you think is profitable. And then you just test them out over a week and then you see if it works. Um, don't spend too much time analyzing like your server um, or specific professions or whatever if you're starting out. Just go craft something. Go try to flip something. Um, like seriously, just post some stuff on the auction house and figure out what sells and go from there. No one, the optimal strategy in gold making is always very specific to you personally. Like the what's optimal for me might not be completely optimal for you. Of course, if you're if you're talking about some ideal like I'm a perfect robot, then we're all gonna f eventually find the same optimal setup. But we're not. We're not robots. We play at different times of the day. We have different preferences in what we want to do in game. Uh, we have different combinations of characters and professions. All of which means that the exact optimal approach for you in the real world is going to be different from mine. The only way to figure it out is to test it out. So go out there and test things out. Don't sit and analyze Wowhead or read Wow Economy for hours upon hours or even my blog. Don't read. Go and apply. Import the TSM settings and go to the auction house. That's where you can make gold. That's where you can learn to make gold. And then the last one and this one is the only one on this list that will actually cost you money if you if you do this mistake and it's trying to reset the market without understanding market resets this is <laughs> if you've been following wow economy for a while i'm sure you've seen po posts of people who just bought out and tried to reset um something like eternal crystals or some other high volume crafting material and then they got burned because they do not understand why or how or when you can actually do resets. 
resets are not a particularly important uh, gold making strategy. It can be profitable, uh, definitely, but unless you're rich already, it doesn't matter because you can't reset unless you're rich. If you want to learn how to reset, which you, it just could be, um, then you need to focus a little bit on understanding the supply situation. Will people be able to or have a lot of supply to come in and undercut me after I've bought out the market? You need to know that. That's the number one mistake people do is that they don't realize that, okay, I'll buy out all the eternal crystals, but there are literally thousands of eternal crystals that people have ready to just post on the auction house again. And they're, I'm never going to, I'm going to run out of gold way before they run out of crystals. So if you want to learn how to reset markets, never try to reset the market if it's going to cost you more than 10% of your gold. Never. And that's after the initial buyout. So probably the initial buyout needs to be less than 5% of your gold. Then you can learn from there. Take it from there. Um, and um, yeah, just just don't spend all your gold on resetting. It's the only, literally the only way to lose all of your gold is to try to, <laughs> that I know of, is to try to reset the market without understanding why it works and then screwing up and buying something that, where you'll get undercut to death. So guys, that was it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. This was more on the conceptual level uh, because that's where I like to to focus on this stuff, um, on like the ideas about around gold making. Um, you could focus on specific like market mistakes, but th it doesn't matter so much because what really matters is to enhance your understanding of the total gold making game. What works and why does it work? And anything that's going to keep you from learning that is going to hold you back long term. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And we'll see you on the next video. Goodbye, guys.